Hello, my name is Ryan Manuk, and I'm a solutions consultant with FileMaker, and I'm really excited to uh, chat with you guys today. And thanks for joining me for today's Idea to iPad webinar, where we'll spend an hour or so turning your submitted ideas into FileMaker solutions for the iOS and demonstrate how easy it is to get started tackling some tasks and creating these custom solutions with FileMaker and provide some further context as where you might take your FileMaker solution. But first, let's spend the next five minutes on some brief housekeeping notes and chat about the idea that we picked. For the best experience, it is strongly recommended that you participate in this webinar with at least a broadband connection. If you have any problems or require online assistance at any time, please contact Citrix Technical Support at 888-259-8414. Now, throughout today's presentation, you'll have the opportunity to type in and ask questions, so let's talk briefly about how to do that. You want to go to the control panel, click on the question section, enter your question, and click send. And we'll try to answer as many as time allows at the end of our presentation, but remember, you don't need to wait until then to submit a question. So as usual, we had a high submission rate with a wide range of entries. So we created a pool of submissions from this session. We combined them with the previous requests. We grouped them into high-level categories and tasks. And then we chose an idea from the most popular one to demo. But keep in mind, FileMaker will continue holding Idea to iPad events in the future. So if your idea wasn't selected this time, you can keep submitting them for use as a potential demo. And while your use case may differ, we'll still be covering some common techniques and features that you can apply to your solution. So your requests were similar to the ones you're seeing on your screen right now, but based on the popularity of your submissions, the winning entry is a survey form. And this idea was submitted with a copy of the actual paper form used in the current process. So we're gonna go ahead and use that as our base for today's demo. And really, while our use case is a laundry survey form, we can easily adjust this to be an inspection list for homes and buildings or an inventory list for um, an inventory list or an employee review form. Really, this could be any type of checklist used in your current workflow. Now, before we start building this out, let's go ahead. Let's assume that we're all part of a sales company that services the laundromat market. And we have a survey team that walks door to door and they uh, like a lot of you today, they capture their information on paper with a form like we just saw. And it's quite a process to aggregate all that information into a spreadsheet with accurate and meaningful information that can be shared across the sales team out in the field. Now, let me go ahead and choose someone from our attendee list. Okay, let's just, let's assume that today Gabriel is our boss. And Gabriel knows that every year we're spending too many wasted cycles on inefficient processes and it's costing our company a lot of time and money. And that's when I get called into his office. Now, Gabriel knows there has to be a way that we can be more effective, more efficient. There's more efficient way to facilitate this process. And Gabriel wants me to solve the following. Gabriel wants to get rid of all the paper surveys clogging up our processes. He wants the ability to aggregate and summarize information and easily provide meaning to the data. And he also wants us to make sure that both the survey team and the sales team can access the solution wherever they are on the go. Now, I just spent the entire day walking door to door and capturing information, and it's late on the day on Friday. And the, with the tools I've been given, I know I'm in for a long night, let alone a long string of weeks or months ahead. But that's when I remember FileMaker. And the first thing I want to do is make sure I can recreate this paper form in FileMaker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a brand new database, create a brand new layout designed for the iOS, and use features like fields, pop-up menus, tables, and relationships to optimize our workflow. So let's go ahead and talk about how we'll do that. Now, when you want to create a, a new database, there's a few different approaches, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to launch my FileMaker Pro Advanced and go to File, New Database, and I'm going to create a database from scratch. Let's go ahead and give this a name. We'll call this uh, Survey Ryan and save it to our desktop. Okay. And right off the bat, we're taken to what we call layout mode. And this is a mode where you can uh, design the look and feel of your database. You can add objects and fields and change the color theme and things like that. I'm going to go ahead and close this out and I'm going to create a brand new layout. So, layouts new layout report. And we get this great layout wizard. And I'm just going to give this layout a name. We'll designate this uh, for the iPad and call this 
uh, survey details. And then I have a few options. Do I want to build a layout for a dimension for the a desktop computer, a uh, touch device? Maybe I want to build a layout for uh, labels or envelopes or a report. But this is ultimately going to be on our iPad so we can get this out to our survey and sales team. So I'm going to choose the iPad, iPad mini. I'm going to choose a form and then I can choose if I want to build this out in a portrait or a landscape orientation. And I'm just going to leave it at the portrait uh, orientation. So I'll click finish. So what happened? Well, FileMaker gave us a layout that's designed to the dimensions of the iOS device and that portrait orientation. And it gave us a theme. Now there's 61 themes in FileMaker that are fully customizable. And you'll notice that some of these are marked as touch. And we can take a look at the difference. Enlighten to enlightened touch, luminous to luminous touch, sophisticated to sophisticated touch. The touch themes have larger fonts and larger objects like you'd expect on your iOS device. So let's go ahead. We'll stick with the sophisticated touch and I'll click OK. OK, now what we need to do is make sure we can capture the information. And in FileMaker, data is stored in what we call fields. And we have this great tool in FileMaker 13 called the Field Picker. This makes it really easy to access and create uh, fields within our tables. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and since we don't have any uh, fields right now, I'm going to create a brand new one. I'm going to click on this new field button, just like that. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a survey ID field. I'm going to change this to number because I want to make sure that every survey that we create is a unique uh, field or has a unique uh, ID, okay? Then I'm gonna go ahead and control, uh, click or right click on Windows and select field options, okay? And to ensure that we always have a, a unique record for each survey, I'm gonna auto enter a serial number uh, in this uh, particular uh, field, okay? Again, that's gonna ensure that we always have a unique number associated with each survey. All right, so let's keep building out. I'm gonna go ahead and add another field and we'll call this a date field. And I'm going to change this type to a date type because that's the value I want to store. And I'm going to capture the surveyor or who is uh, performing the survey. Okay. And then if we take a look at the uh, laundry form, we probably want to capture uh, some fields for the store, the owner. But I'm going to skip the location for now and then uh, the equipment. So let's go ahead and we'll start capturing and uh, adding some fields for the uh, store itself. Because some of the fields were duplicated between the store and the owner, like the address, city, and state, and things like that, I'm going to go ahead and label the store with a uh, a mark of store underscore, and then we'll say uh, name. That's a text field. Store underscore phone. Store underscore address. Store underscore city store underscore state and a final one for the zip code and this is going to allow me to again since we have we're going to be capturing multiple um, instances of a name phone address city state and zip code it's going to help me uh, differentiate where my values are stored okay so now we need to bring this information or these fields over onto our layout and how do we do that well, it's quite simple. All we need to do is just select a field or I can select multiple fields using the shift or control key. So I'll select the date and surveyor field and I'm going to bring these uh, fields out horizontally. And all we need to do is just drag and drop just like that. Okay. Again, it's just select a field or two and just drag and drop it right onto the layout just like that. I'm going to go ahead and Make these a little bit, um, make these a little bit larger. These fields a little bit larger, okay. And you'll notice that these blue lines appear. What are these blue lines? Those are what we call it, dynamic guides. They help you quickly align your objects and fields on your layout. Okay. And now we need to add our uh, laundry store information. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, if we take a look at the uh, form, okay. We're going to go ahead and recreate uh, these sections that they have here. All right. And there's different uh, approaches that you can take with uh, your survey. You don't necessarily have to follow uh, this route, but uh, just for this demo, we're going to go ahead and uh, try to recreate the look of this survey. I'll make this a little bit larger. And this is a rectangle object. And you'll notice right off the bat, the recti uh, rectangle object has its own fill. 
uh, inside. So I want to remove that. So what I'm going to do is bring up the inspector, okay, and go to the appearance tab, and I'm going to choose uh, to remove that fill. And then I want to give the rectangle its uh, outer line, okay? And next we need to label what this section is. So I'm gonna use this text object. This allows me to put literal text onto my layout. And I'm gonna add uh, laundry site information. And we'll make this a little bit larger. Let's open this up. And I think 18 font is pretty good. We'll bold that out. And what you're seeing already is that the text object does not have any fill and we can see that line beneath um, this uh, text object and it kind of obstructs what we're trying to um, uh, display here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give this text object a fill and I want it to match the background of this body. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the body and you'll notice that in the inspector, okay, we have the uh, solid color fill here. So if I click on this color, I can grab that color and place it right into my picker down here. Okay. So now when I click on the text object and add a fill background color, I can now choose the body color that I added just like that. And if we open this up a little bit, we now get uh, that illusion that the line kind of stops where uh, the uh, text starts. And we can add a little bit of padding here as well just like that, so it's centered a little bit. And I'm gonna use the arrow keys to center that a little bit more. Okay, pretty good start, let's keep going. Now we have these store information fields that we need to bring over, okay? And just like we did with the date and surveyor fields, it's just a drag and drop. So I'm gonna select the name and phone fields, okay? And just bring that over, just like that. Again, using my dynamic guides to help me align. Okay, and let's go ahead and we'll change these labels. I'm just gonna say store name, and I'm just gonna put phone for this one, okay? We'll make the store name just a little bit longer. Make sure the phone matches, okay? Now I'll bring the address field over, okay? Again, using the dynamic guides, and we'll change the name of the labels here as well, okay? Just like that. And I'll make this store address field a little bit longer. And then finally, we'll add the city, state, and zip, but I'll start with the city and state. Okay. Again, we'll rename these labels really quickly. All right. Out. Change the state. The state field doesn't need to be this long, so we'll make this a little bit shorter. Just like that, put the state larger. And then finally we'll add the zip code of the store, okay? And again, we'll rename the label, make this a little bit smaller, okay? And there we go, pretty good start. Now we'll notice that these fields by default have a white background fill. So I want to remove that. And you can easily do that in FileMaker 13 with the uh, ability to uh, manipulate styles. And if you use a word processor, you know what styles are. It's just grabbing a bunch of objects and giving them a uh, different or alternative look. And in FileMaker 13, objects and fields, uh, depending on uh, you know the, the different type of objects or different type of fields, they'll have different types of default settings that you can choose. Again, you can fully customize this yourself, but uh, the minimal edit box by default, that's good. I'm just gonna go ahead and click on that and remove um, the uh, outer lines and also uh, the fill background. But then I'm gonna go ahead and let's highlight these uh, fields again, because I wanna add a line to the bottom of the field. Okay, and we'll make this black, just like that. And it looks like my zip code feels a little bit, there we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and, oh, let's go ahead and add a title for this layout. 
Let's say laundry store. Oop. Let's say laundry survey form. And we'll make this larger as well. Um, 36 font is good. All right, we'll make this right here in the center. Okay. All right, so again, this is layout mode where we drag and drop, design the look of the layout. I'm gonna go ahead and exit layout mode and jump into browse mode. And that's where we can uh, enter information and enter data. And uh, we can kind of get a look of the uh, user interface in uh, that view. So I'm gonna go ahead and save these changes and we'll take a look at what we created. Pretty good start. You can see that uh, the line that we created down at the bottom uh, has stuck. If we take a look at our original form, uh, it's pretty close to um, how it looked in the uh, paper format. Okay, so let's keep building out. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna close this database and I'm gonna jump into uh, this uh, second database that I created to save some time. And what I've done is uh, essentially the same steps as above. Let me jump back into layout mode really quickly. Okay, so for the owner information, what we did was I created uh, fields for uh, the owner, uh, drag and drop them right onto the layout, gave that the little rectangle section here as well, like we did previously, and then um, uh, formatted the field so we just had the line underneath, again, just to save some time. So what's next? Now you need to add the um, equipment. Okay, so we're gonna skip the uh, location information again, just to save some time. It's setting this up would be just like what we, uh, what we did with the uh, first two sections. But now we need to store the equipment. And one thing that we'll notice about with this piece of paper is that, uh, you know, we have some top load washers, front load washers, we're, we're marking it by quantity. Uh, then we have some other fields here. So you're kind of stuck with uh, what you get. And, and in some cases, you know, that's, uh, that's okay if we know exactly what we're looking for, uh, that's okay. But what if we wanted it to be a little bit more dynamic? And since we're creating a digital version of this paper form, we should take advantage of that. So what I'm gonna do is instead of just creating uh, these fields or recreating these fields directly onto this layout, I'm actually gonna create a brand new table and have all of my equipment stored in a brand new equipment table, relate that to my surveys, and then use a what we call a portal uh, portal tool to display all of the related equipment directly onto this layout. And that means we can uh, add as much equipment that as we, as we want uh, to this particular layout and we're not uh, confined to um, you know 12 or 13 objects. So let's go ahead and talk about how we'll do that. I'm gonna go to file, I'm gonna go to file, manage, database okay and this is the managed database window a lot of different ways that you can get to this window in filemaker but essentially this is where you can build on the database schema so you can add more tables you can create new fields and associate those fields with the tables and then you can create relationships between the tables this is the real power of filemaker connecting that related information but again i want to create a brand new table called equipment okay so we'll call this equipment, click create, all right? And then I'll add some fields. And the first thing I wanna do is add an equipment ID field. Again, I wanna make sure that every piece of equipment has their own unique value, okay? And just like we did with the survey um, ID field, I'm gonna set this up to auto enter with a serial number. Again, indicating that every record will be unique. Okay, then we'll need a survey ID field, and this will allow us to create a relationship with the survey table, okay? Then we probably wanna add the type. We wanna capture that for the equipment. We wanna capture the brand, the model. And then how about, let's capture a few pictures of uh, the equipment. That'll certainly help out our sales team, uh, and it'll definitely help out uh, with uh, the survey team as well. Um, and you know, again, we can already start solving some of the limitations of sticking with paper. What we're gonna do is leverage this container field uh, or leverage the iOS devices camera and store pictures directly into a container field. Now a container field, that's where we store media in FileMaker. So all your files like PDF files, text documents, uh, sound files, movie files, images, all of that's gonna be stored in container fields. And we'll see the power of that in a bit. 
Okay, so I think it's a pretty good start for the equipment table. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'll click OK. And we get a brand new uh, equipment uh, table. We also get an equipment layout, which is created. All right, but I want that information to be shown right in this area right here. Right, I want to show all of the equipment related to uh, my survey. So I'm going to use this tool called a portal. Okay, and actually, you know, before we build that out, let's go ahead and we'll add the rectangle for the equipment information here. And what I'm doing is I'm highlighting uh, the text object and the rectangle object here, and I'm going to duplicate that. Just a uh, command D or control D on Windows, and that's just saving me time, uh, so I don't have to uh, recreate these objects. I'm just going to make this a little bit larger, okay? And let's go ahead and make this field a little bit larger as well. And we'll change this to equipment. All right. And we'll resize this. Perfect. Now we can add our portal. So let's go back. And a portal is exactly what it sounds like. It's a view into another tables of related records, or it's a portal into another table. Okay. So show related records from. Well, we didn't create a relationship yet, and that's okay. Let's go back to that managed database. Remember how I talked about there's a lot of different ways you can get to this screen. I'm going to go to the relationships tab, and here we see graphical representations of the tables that we just created. Okay. And when you want to create a relationship in FileMaker, it's as simple as finding common fields with common values. And in this scenario, it's pretty straightforward. We want the values in the survey ID field to match the values in the survey ID field, and then we can share all of the related information. So if I want to create a relationship, I'm just going to, again, drag and drop. So I'm going to click, hold, and drag to the survey ID field in equipment. Okay. Again, it's as simple as clicking and holding and dragging and dropping. Again, I'm telling FileMaker when the value in the survey ID field matches the value in the survey ID field, allow me to share those records. Okay, I'm going to take this a step further as well. I just double clicked on this relationship and I want to specify and let FileMaker know it's okay to create records in the equipment table based off of this relationship. And we're going to take advantage of that in the portal. So I'm going to click OK and click OK. Now, in this portal setup window, I can choose the equipment table. Okay, and I'll show a vertical scroll bar and I'll click OK. And we can choose fields directly from the equipment table in this uh, portal wizard, but I'm going to cancel that out because I want to show you that in the field picker, you can also choose fields from other tables as well. So I'm going to choose the type, brand, and model. Okay, I'm going to choose to bring them out horizontally and I'm going to uh, put the labels above the fields. And this is going to make it a lot easier to put on our uh, layout. There we go. Just resize these a bit. Okay. All right. And I'm just going to use the arrow keys to move these guys down a little bit. Okay. Now you may be wondering, what does this mean? Customizable graphic reporting accessible. Uh, right now I have it set to show sample data. So uh, if I turn that off, you can see we get the names of the fields uh, again. Okay, and this is just a, a nice way to see some sample data that you have on your layout. So if you want to uh, move like labels around and, and uh, align things a little bit better to the text within the fields, it can kind of help out a bit. But here, I'll, I'll turn that off for now. Okay, so we'll see that. And let's go ahead and we'll move these over a little bit. Okay. Just like that. Model. We'll move this over as well. Okay. Again, using the dynamic guides. Now, having a solution on the iOS device, everything is really touch driven. We want to cut down on the amount of of uh, tapping, cut down the amount of uh, typing that our uh, users have to do. So we can make it a lot easier in this section with the equipment, instead of having to constantly type, type in a specific uh, type, um, like the uh, front load washer or, or the uh, a dryer, or if it's a change machine, and we can cut down the amount of typing for the brand by using value lists. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
click on this type field and I'm gonna go back to my inspector and jump to the data tab, okay? And the control style right now is edit box, meaning that I just type my value in to this field. And I'm going to change it to pop-up menu. And I'm going to create a value list for this uh, pop-up menu. And here I've had uh, added the equipment type value list. We could create a brand new one if we wanted, but uh, I'm going to edit it. And I can add custom values, any custom values that I want uh, in this uh, particular value list. And here I just manually entered these values um, for this equipment type, okay? And same thing for the brand. I'm gonna change this uh, to a pop-up menu, okay? And I could create a brand new value list again, but here I have one already created called brands. And if I edit that, it shows you again, I just entered these custom values, brand A through D, okay? And click okay, all right. And then finally, we have this white fill again. It's really contrasting off of our layout. So what I'm gonna do is, if we go to styles, we'll see the minimal pop-up menu. So I'm going to choose both of those, select minimal pop-up menu again, and the model. Uh, this is just a standard field, and we know we have a minimal edit box for that. So I'm going to choose a minimal edit box, and there we go. Okay, let's go ahead and take a quick look uh, at the changes we made back in browse mode. So I'm going to exit the layout, go back to browse mode, okay? And we can see this portal that we created. I'll create a brand new record, okay? And let's see our pop-up menus in action. So now I can just select type, say this is a washer's front load, this is brand A, this is model HHR283, okay, same thing, they also have another one, uh, brand A, same uh, model, all right, they have a, a dryer, brand C, and this model is NFD451, so on and so forth, and we can keep uh, building that out. Okay, so let's go back to layout mode. And here's a good example of why we would use sample data. Looks like my front value is getting cut off here. Let's make this a little bit smaller. Okay. And there we go. Now our washer's front load will appear. Perfect. Now, what about that container field that we created? If we want to take some pictures of each of these uh equipment. Well, let's go ahead and I'm going to use this brand new feature of FileMaker 13 called a popover button. I probably don't want to store a picture directly into this portal because it's going to make it really large. And I want the ability to kind of uh, have the picture be a little bit uh, bigger. And I don't want each row of the portal to be uh, too large. It's going to make it uh, more cumbersome to scroll through and enter information. So I'm going to use this popover button. Okay, and take advantage of this. And what happens with a popover button is when you click on this button, you get a uh, menu to appear. And you can choose where you want that menu to appear in relation to the button. It could be uh, to either side, above or below. Okay, I'm gonna make it uh, appear to the left of the button. Okay, and um, we'll call this uh, e equipment picture. Okay, and you can see the menu took that title and we'll name this button, uh, we'll just say view on this button here, okay? I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller so it fits in my portal, all right? Uh, let's keep working with this button, for example. I don't want this dark um, fill to appear, so let's go back to the uh, inspector and change that appearance. Uh, I'm gonna select none because I don't want uh, any background. And I'm gonna change that text because uh, the white color just doesn't appear and we'll just make it a, uh, a darker gray, okay? Now let's go to our field picker. The popover uh, window is open, all right? Jump to the equipments table and select pick. We won't need a label for that. I'll just drag and drop that directly onto uh, my layout. And you're seeing this picture of uh, the FileMaker logo because again, I have show sample data on. If I remove that, you'll just see the name of the field. Okay. So let's go ahead and exit this layout. And when I click on the view button, again, I can now uh, enter pictures on here. We'll show you how to do that uh, on the iOS side. 
If we look again at the survey side by side, we're making some really great progress and we're already solving some of the limitations of working with paper. Okay, so what did we do? Well, we created a brand new database. We created a brand new layout designed for the iOS. And then we use features like fields, pop-up menus, tables and relationships to optimize our workflow. And by replacing our previous paper-based process, we're no longer bogged down by mountains of survey forms with information scattered across numerous sheets of paper, allowing us more time to focus on productive activities. So I'm feeling pretty confident that I can prove to Gabriel that the first criteria is met, but the clock is still ticking and I need to make sure that we can access the solution from the iPads out in the field. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my solution, host it with FileMaker Server, and then access that solution with FileMaker Go. So let's go ahead and talk about how we'll do that. I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this survey form. And I'm gonna go ahead and host this up with FileMaker Server. Now FileMaker Server, it's strictly a hosting application and it's the hub of your solution. So you create your database in the FileMaker Pro or Pro Advanced app for the desktop, just like we did. And then you host it with FileMaker Server, it just runs the services in the background. And in order to send this up to FileMaker Server, I'm gonna click on the share icon. I'm gonna select upload to FileMaker Server. Okay. It's just telling me it needs to be closed first. I'll click okay. I'm gonna choose uh, my computer. Again, I have FileMaker uh, Server running as uh, services in the background of my computer. I'm gonna enter my FileMaker Server credentials and click next. File is ready to be uploaded. Okay, open with FileMaker Pro is checked, so I'll click done. Now it looks like the database we were just working with, but you'll notice at the top in parentheses, it says Ryan Minux FileMaker Server, and that's give us, giving us an indication that we're accessing a hosted solution. But how do we get this over to the iPad? Well, in order to show you, allow me to launch Reflector. Okay, and Reflector is gonna allow me to airplay the iPad Air I have in my hands right now. So just give me one moment to connect to my computer with my iPad Air. Okay, I see my computer here and there it is. This is the iPad Air I'm currently holding. And you'll see down at the bottom left corner, we have the FileMaker Go icon. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap on that. And this is FileMaker Go 13. It's a free download on the App Store. And you see we have some icons in the upper left corner. Right now it's uh, set to recent and this shows the uh, most recent databases and servers I've accessed. If I tap on the device icon, this shows me all the databases that are stored locally on this device, which is a, a great alternative when I'm in an area with a bad network, connect, network connection or no network connection at all, especially going door to door uh, or, or store to store at the uh, laundromats, uh, they don't have a very good uh, network connection. So this is a, a really invaluable feature. Then I can tap on the host icon, and this allows me to access FileMaker hosted databases that are, are hosted locally on the local area network or um, external servers. So I'm gonna scroll through this list and you'll see mine uh, towards the top, Ryan Minook's FileMaker server. I'll go ahead and tap on that, okay, oops. Let's go ahead and bring that up again. There's my server, tap on that. And we'll give this a moment. And here are all the databases I'm currently hosting on my FileMaker server. And you'll see down towards the bottom, we have that uh, server to uh, copy that we just uploaded. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap on that. And there is our, um, our survey form. Again, looks pretty similar to uh, the survey form uh, that we are currently using on paper. And this is the digital version of it. So we can do a lot of things. Um, I can start adding some information here. Say, uh, here, we'll use today's date. I can add my name, just like that. Okay. I can add a store name. Okay. All right and so on. Let's go ahead and jump down to that portal that we were working with. There's the popover uh, menu that uh, we created. So I'll choose, uh, we'll use it on the dryer. We'll say this is a brand B. We can enter a, uh, a model number, 
before five. And then remember that popover button that we created. If I tap on that view button, we have that container field image. I'm going to go ahead and tap and hold on that. Okay. And then I'm going to uh, have a few options here. I can choose an image from my library. I can store a signature. That's only specific to the iOS. I can put some audio, uh, music, but I'm going to choose the camera. Okay. Cause again, I want to leverage the iOS devices to take pictures and store it directly into the container field. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on camera and you get a nice view of the FileMaker Studio. I'm going to go ahead and take that picture there. We'll select use photo. And just like that, that image is stored directly into that container field. When you imagine in this scenario, we're taking pictures of that equipment um, right up front. Okay, so what did we do? Really, it was just two things. We took our solution, we hosted it with FileMaker Server, and we connected to it with FileMaker Go. And really, uh, that's really just a minute without me talking, and we're able to access our solution anywhere we are, and we're able to get that data whenever we want it. So in just a short amount of time, we've made some great progress in our solution, and it looks like we'll be out of the office in well under an hour. But we still need to prove to Gabriel that we can easily gain meaning out of all of this collected data and transfer it to our sales team. And to do so, I'm going to take advantage of FileMaker's quick reports and charting features. So let's talk about how we can do that. So I'm going to go ahead and close out this reflector. Okay. Let's like hide. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and bring up my FileMaker Pro Advanced. And I'm going to close this uh, database that we we're working with. And I'm going to connect to a FileMaker uh, server uh, hosted database. And this is the same database that uh, we have been uh, working on. Okay. Here's like the same layout. All I've done is add some data. So we have some data to work with uh, to this layout. Okay. So we added some uh, data here. Just like that. Okay. So same, same database, just added data. Now, one benefit of using this uh, uh, relationship and, and storing the information directly into uh, the portal is that all of the information that we've entered is already stored in that equipment table. So we don't have to, uh, like previously, take all of the information that we had on paper and uh, re-enter that into a uh, spreadsheet. All that information is automatically stored in the equipment table uh, once we enter it. So there's no duplicate entries. But how do we get some meaning out of this data? Well, let's go ahead and say that we just wanted to understand um, how many uh, how many uh, pieces of equipment we have for each brand. So we get a better understanding of uh, what we really need to push for, what uh, sales products we need to uh, create. Well, we can use FileMaker's quick report features in this table view, this spreadsheet-like view, to really easily obtain that information. So up at the top of the column, of the brand uh, column, I'm going to go ahead and uh, click on this arrow. It appears when you hover over uh, the field name. And I'm going to select add trailing group by brand. Okay. And just like that, it automatically groups all of the records uh, by the brand. And you'll see we have this uh, demarcation line here. Okay. All of the equipment by brand. Let's keep building that out. Certainly we could uh, manually count how many uh, items we have or we reviewed for each uh, brand, but let's let FileMaker do that work for us. Okay, I'm going to go back to that menu and select trailing subtotals and select count. And just like that, we have a count for each of those brands. But what if we only wanted to show the washers, the front load washers? So that way our sales team can really uh, target uh, these particular uh, uh, equipments or these particular items. Well, there's a few different ways that you can perform finds in FileMaker, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to find a field with a value that I want to search for, okay? And I'm going to control click or right click on Windows, and we have this option here, find matching records. And just like that, I get all of the records 
that are for the front load washers. And then I can go back to my uh, trailing group. And there we go. The trailing subtotals uh, stuck with us. So we get a nice view of uh, just the uh, front load washers. Again, really quickly and really easily getting some meaning out of our data. Now this is a lot better than looking at the information in, in a full spreadsheet view, but we can probably make it a little bit easier on ourselves. Just got to be a better way that we can visually represent our data. So I'm going to go back to this menu and I'm going to select chart by brand. Okay. And we can quickly create a chart to view this information. So I'm going to select show data points on chart and I'll give a title. Uh, this is uh, uh, washers. I'm going to put this in quotation marks. Washers front load uh, count. All right. And then we can save this as a layout. Okay. Um, so we can save this as a layout and click OK. Change to the layout. And that way it's e it's really easy for us to uh, come back to this layout and view, okay, um, what do we need for the uh, front load washers? Okay, uh, what are we currently seeing out there? Again, this is a really great way for uh, the beginnings of a dashboard view for Gabriel where he can just have a really quick view of uh, our information, okay, without having to dig deep in the uh, spreadsheets, right? Now, one thing about the charts is that uh, the way this is currently built, okay, is based off the uh, current found set, all right? So the current found set in that equipments table, if we go back to equipment, let me go back to browse mode, uh, we've currently found 42 records, all the washers uh, front load. If we show all of the records, okay, and go, to go back to the uh, charts layout, we'll see uh, the values have jumped because now we're charting everything that's underneath uh, each brand. Okay, it's no longer just the washers front load. And we can script some of that out as well, but uh, for this demo, we're just going to go ahead and, and manually do this here. Now let's take a look at the chart on uh, the iOS device. One second here again to uh, connect to my machine. Okay, launch reflector. All right. And down at the bottom left, you'll see iPad survey details, that name with the little uh, blue square icon. That's our layout icon. I'm going to tap on that. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, select equipment. Okay. And let's go ahead and we'll search for um, for the uh, washers front load search. Oops, uh, let's do washers. Let's just do uh, washers. We have two here. Oh, you know, I'm still in survey. Copy two here. I'm sorry. Let me go to uh, my survey three database with all the data in it. That's why we only have two records. Okay, so the survey three data. Okay, so this is the solution with all of the uh, uh, data in it. Very good. We'll do a, a search here, a quick find for uh, washers front load search. There's the 42 records. Okay. So that's our current found set. We can jump to the chart that was just created and there we go. Again, we can get this information right on the fly, get some more meaningful conversations with our customers. And we can create individual charts for, uh, you know, each equipment. We can have individual charts for, uh, uh, the sales team, uh, really, again, we can create a nice dashboard uh, for Gabriel. Okay, so what do we do? Really simple. We just use FileMaker's Quick Reports and Chart Feature to quickly gain meaning from our data. So instead of manually adding and summarizing data, we have the ability to quickly do the same things at our fingertips. And we're guaranteed accurate, 
up-to-date information, which equals more meaningful conversations with customers and better sales. So we were able to prove to Gabriel that we now have a solution that allows us to transition from paper to paperless. It allows us to quickly aggregate and gain meaning from our data, and it can be accessed from wherever we are, whenever we want it. So our day has become much more efficient. We're no longer sifting through mountains of paper. We've reduced the amount of duplicate entry, and we're guaranteed to be working with the most up-to-date data. But for Gabriel, what is his benefit? Well, aside from just the amount we've saved moving away from paper, how much more time can be spent on just one more customer call or customer contact in the day spread across the entire sales team? And then roll that over a week or a month and think of the ROI rolled into that with a year. Okay, so what I'd like to do now is we'll open it up to Q&A. Uh, if you haven't already entered your question, again, you can do so by going to the control panel, the question section, enter your question and click on send. Um, I can see that a lot of you have already done so. And uh, to give those of you who have not some more time, what I like to do is talk about some next steps, uh, some great resources for you. Uh, to start off, FileMaker recently released the FileMaker training series. Uh, we have a basics and a advanced version. The basics version is free to download off FileMaker's website, and you can also get it for free off of uh, iBooks. Advanced is a $19.99 purchase. These are fantastic uh, resources to uh, really build up your foundational FileMaker. So you'll learn a lot of techniques you saw today, and you'll also walk through uh, a solution kind of like we did today as well. So it's a really nice guide. Again, uh, getting a nice foundation of a uh, file maker and what you can do with the software. Then if you haven't already, go ahead and download FileMaker Go 13. It's for free. It's down. Uh, you can download it off the app store. And uh, if you need to uh, build a database as well, if you don't have uh, a copy of FileMaker Pro, download the free FileMaker Pro trial and get started working with that. Again, uh, in order to create the database, you'll need a copy of uh, FileMaker Pro, the desktop version, uh, to build that out. And then there's uh, more FileMaker web se uh, seminars at FileMaker.com forward slash support forward slash webinars. A lot of great uh, um, uh, webinars there with a, a bunch of different topics. Again, to uh, familiarize yourself with the uh, FileMaker platform. Another great resource that's not listed here is the FileMaker forums. It's 100% free. Uh, you can search to see if anyone has asked a similar question or you can um, uh, initiate your own conversations, uh, start as many threads as you want. It's a fantastic resource. It's a, a highly active community of developers of all levels uh, and uh, it's moderated by FileMaker as well. And it's a really great place um, when you've become familiar with FileMaker, you know, you have a nice foundation, but you want to start learning specific things unique to your own workflow. Um, and you need to get over that hump a little bit. The FileMaker forums are a really great resource for that. And then if you're ready to purchase, contact your FileMaker volume licensing sales rep at the URL that you see above, or give us a call at 1-800-725-2747. We have a fantastic annual volume license agreement Monthly prices start as low as $9 for FileMaker Pro and as low as $29 for FileMaker Server. Again, give us a call at 1-800-725-2747. We'd love to chat with you. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll jump into the Q&A. Just give me one second here to, uh, oops, I want to uh, minimize this. Give me one second here to uh, view our questions um, and queue these up. Oops, here we go. Okay. So the first question. Um, okay. Is there a way for FileMaker to create a thumbnail from a large image in container to use in place of a popover button? Uh, yeah, with a simple like checkbox, you can specify that uh, you want to use a thumbnail, but um, you wouldn't necessarily. It it just gives you a smaller uh, uh, smaller rendition of your image. If you wanted to uh, have a image uh, be used to like trigger something instead of the popover button, you can do so. You can actually make your container field a button, so you could have um, you know store an image in that container field, but then when you click on it. 
uh, it can do a, a uh, it can run a script, for example, or do whatever you wanted to do, uh, open up a new window or something like that. Good question. Okay, so the next one, what are the ways I can get my solution on my iPad? Okay, so you saw me uh, earlier in uh, the demonstration uh, when I was showing you Famic Go 13, there's an option to view the databases stored locally on your device. Again, a great alternative when you're working in an area with a bad network connection or no network connection. But in order to get those databases over onto your device and store locally there, you can use um, iTunes, you can email it to yourself, you can put the database up on a website and download it, or you could use a third party device like, um, like Dropbox, for example. And just keep in mind that when you're working on uh, the uh, database that's stored locally, uh, that's strictly a standalone database. So those updates are not reflected on the host machine and vice versa. So you'll need to uh, create an import script between them. Uh, and there's also some software out there um, like GoZinc by C Code, MirrorSync by uh, uh, 360 Works. Uh, there's a few more. Uh, a quick search in your um, web browser of choice will uh, yield some results there. But uh, there's some software out there that help take some of that responsibility out of your hands in terms of creating that uh, scripted import. All right, the next question. Can you make it so people using the mobile version can only read or look up data? Uh, you definitely can. And with FileMaker, file security comes down to uh, accounts and privilege sets. So you can specify in FileMaker accounts or who's logging into my file and then privilege sets. What can you do in my file? And by default, there's three privilege sets. Um, uh, it's uh, admin access, data entry only, and read only access. But it's a best practice for you to uh, you know create your own privilege set because you, there may be some things that you want users uh, to do uh, above a read-only access, but not necessarily at the level of a, a data entry or admin um, level access. You want you want full control of how your users can use your uh, solution. So, for example, in our solution, um, you know we can specify down to the very field. Let's say that uh, I only want people who uh, performed a survey to view their own records. So I can specify in the privilege set. If you know my login name doesn't match the surveyor name, then I'm not allowed to see uh, that record. So that's just an example of how we can uh, incorporate that into our solution. Okay, the next question. Can most of what was demoed today be done on FileMaker Pro 13 if we don't have the advanced version? Uh, it's a great question. And uh, everything you can do today, uh, you can do in FileMaker Pro 13. Um, I didn't. I'm trying to think of it, the tables. Uh, in the Manage Database tables, you can uh, copy and paste uh, fields between uh, tables. But the FileMaker Pro Advanced, it really gives you uh, this menu. This is, the, this is the main difference between Pro and Pro Advanced. Pro Advanced is really like a superset of FileMaker Pro, but you get this menu here, and this actually is a very invaluable uh, menu uh, for the developer. So for your power users, for, you know, the end users, they can have a copy of FileMaker Pro, but the developer, or if you have multiple developers, they should always have a copy of FileMaker Pro Advanced. Uh, these tools here just make your development uh, so much more, um, so much more, so much easier on you. Script Debugger, for example, uh, when you start building out scripts, this allows you to run through your scripts uh, step by step. Otherwise, you could build a script, and the only way you know if it works or fails is if um, you run the script in its entirety. And if it fails, you have to keep tweaking things just uh, based off of guesstimation. Uh, the data viewer, uh, you do use a lot of calculations uh, in scripts um, and just writing calculations as well. And this allows you to uh, you know, verify uh, you're getting the results that you want with your calculations. That's a, a really great feature as well. Custom menus, this gives you the ability to, again, uh, have more control of your solution. Uh, maybe I don't want uh, my uh, uh, certain users to have the ability to, to view, uh, you know, new records or, or delete records, um, or the ability to copy and paste. You can remove that. You can remove full menus from the, uh, uh, the menu set that users log in with. So, uh, in terms of what we built today, you can build that with FileMaker Pro, but it's highly recommended developer, um, uh, or developers have a copy of FileMaker Pro advanced. Okay. Um, the next question 
Uh, are there scripts in FileMaker Pro to adjust a layout from landscape to portrait when used on FileMaker Grow? Uh, fantastic question. And uh, with FileMaker 13, we introduced a brand new script trigger, okay, uh, on layout size change. Okay, so what that means is that if you uh, rotate the uh, device, okay, FileMaker will, uh, it'll run that script trigger and then it will determine, okay, so we're now have moved to portrait mode and I'm going to jump to a uh, portrait mode uh, uh, layout. So uh, the moving parts in that, you will have to create a layout for portrait mode, layouts for landscape mode, and then you would just use the script triggers to uh, jump um, you know, back and forth when appropriate. Okay, final question for the day. Does FileMaker Go 13 work with databases built in FileMaker 12 on the Mac? You can have a mixed platform of uh, FileMaker Go 13. It can access the FileMaker 12 databases. It's uh, completely cross-platform. Just keep in mind, um, if you're using a uh, mixed environment, you should always develop in the earliest version. So for example, if you have 12 and 13, you should always keep development in uh, FileMaker uh, 12. And uh, the reason being is not only could you use features that uh, are not uh, compatible with the previous version, but you know there's some things on the back end as well, like you know with themes that, um, and the styles that may not translate well over to uh, the previous version. Uh, that said, uh, everybody should move on to FileMaker 13 <laughs> regardless, right? Okay, so fantastic questions. Um, and I think that's all we have for today. So on behalf of FileMaker, it was my absolute pleasure chatting with you guys today. And I hope to see you on another webinar soon. Thanks.